Hickok 45, you might not know it, but the 10 millimeter was developed by none other than Jeff Cooper and Norma. Uh, that's not his wife, that's a cartridge company, okay? And the main reason he wanted to develop the 10 millimeter round was for this. That was it. <laughs> and two liters, and bowling pins, and pots to smoke pot with. I don't think I got him. How about this one? Whoa! <laughs> oh, look at right here. Woo! We're creating our own thunder. You know what? I have another magazine. Mr. Cowboy, you may never have been hit with a 10 millimeter because it wasn't exactly a Wild West cartridge, but guess what? Oh, I missed a couple of times just to show you, you know, what it's like to miss. Yeah, this is a 10 millimeter, the Delta Elite. Okay, uh, man, interesting firearm. We've had a lot of requests to do it. I've just never, have I ever shot one? Probably somewhere, maybe a round or two. Maybe not. I just don't recall. I know some guys had them back uh, in the 80s when I was doing a little IPSC shooting and that kind of thing. And uh, now, of course, just shooting on the range doesn't matter. But uh, even even the regular range ammo in 10 millimeter is hotter than 40. I have shot both in the same firearm, like in a Glock uh, 20. It, it's like you switch from 10 millimeter, even something like this. When you put a 40 caliber in it, it's like switching to 22 long rifle almost in that big old gun. So there is a difference, believe me, even with just regular range ammo. But it's a powerful cartridge, and uh, this firearm is. Uh, it's pretty interesting. It came out in, well, let's see, Cooper and Company came up with the uh, 10 millimeter. They developed that in 83, I think, uh, along with Norma Cartridge Company, whatever their official name was, I don't know. And it was uh, first realized in the Bren 10, which was kind of a, a, a variation of a CZ-75, I understand. I've never fired one. I've never even held one. I uh, think, um, what's his name uh sonny crockett and uh, miami vice carried one for at least during the first part of that show i think the first uh, year maybe i don't know but it's a uh it's a cartridge that didn't exist until then and then colt was the first company to produce your know, first major manufacturer to produce a gun chambered for it in 86 or 87 i think and there it was it was basically this gun now they've recently in reintroduced it you know in 2008 but this was kind of it they made a few improvements in it but not a lot of difference okay it's got a commander hammer now uh and i think they may beefed it up a little bit in certain areas and they've got a double spring in it which i'll show you and uh it's appropriate that we're getting a little bit of thunder because man this thing and we've of course we're empty it, uh, it rolls out the thunder itself, doesn't it? And it's just your standard 1911. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. You know, you don't have a, that really cool beaver tail, high ride beaver tail or anything like that, or flat mainspring housing. It's almost a GI model when you get right down to it. You see this uh, double spring here. It's long and you know, it's got a double affair. That reduces some of that, that battering that you know the frame takes with the powerful 10 millimeter ammo okay and barrel and bushing everything is the same it's, it's just like your 45 other than that basically okay so i'll uh, slip that back in there and see if i can get it back together it's cool because it is a 1911 if you like 1911s uh this is just a more powerful 1911 Somebody or somehow we got a little bit of an idiot scratch on it. I think it's a new gun. It's not bad, but there's a little bit of an idiot scratch there that I did not do. Believe me, I've just taken it apart one time. And I'm always very careful about that. So you know, it feels good. I feel like it's, it's made uh, well. There's no struggling getting it apart together. Everything fits well. So, so let me load up some mags here. Uh, just have the two mags came with it. Now again, this is 180 grain American Eagle, kind of the mainstay. It's good range ammo. Uh, like I say, it it uh, it came out in about '87, and then it it did fine 
but you know in the 90s when everybody was going to like the 40 and uh and the 10 was a little too powerful for some people like even the fbi you know they thought that was going to be their new cartridge but they decided it needed to be weakened up a little bit and uh, they were asking manufacturers to reduce the load and they ended up going down to a 40 caliber and so the 10 it didn't stay as strong at least in this this firearm and they discontinued it in uh, 96 i think quit making the thing and then uh, glock came out with the uh, glock 20 and in a lot of ways that re revitalized the the 10 millimeter i think i can't remember the year that the glock came out i'm thinking that was that was in the uh around 19 because i had one soon after they came out i'm thinking it was uh well no i didn't it was 2000 one or something like that before I actually had one but I'm thinking it was around uh, before 96 but anyway in the 90 I think early 90s I may be wrong on that but when Glock came out with the 20 Glock 20 that became a very popular firearm there were not many the Bren 10 kind of fell by the wayside there were not many guns in chambered in uh, 10 millimeter that period and they were having some trouble with this one because the frames were cracking you know at times and so like I say they've they've I think corrected those problems. So anyway, they discontinued it in uh, in like '96 or so, and it came back in 2008, uh, and they, here it is. And so I've not seen much negative about it. I think it's holding up pretty well now, and it's a 1911 and 10 millimeter. It's an interesting cartridge. Uh, it really does have. I know I say that a lot. There's a cult following for this gun or this cartridge. There really is for the 10 millimeter. It's not necessarily cult. It's it's pretty popular. You get right down to it. I like it myself. It's it's a it's a nice cartridge. Oh, we got a target over here. Let's put a couple on it. Ah. All right. It's too powerful to punch just paper. Yeah, I need to be missing some pots. I wonder if I can hit a two liter with it. Maybe not. You know, it's my fancy magazine pouch, my shirt pocket, where I just have uh, one extra magazine I didn't uh, put on a uh, mag pouch. All right, let's try that orange two liter. I think the sights are right on. Whether I'm right on is another matter. Yeah. There we go. And we haven't put one on the gong yet, have we? Still haven't. There we have. Nice. Let's try a ram. I don't know where it's hitting. I think I hit him on the leg. Out of ammo. Well, it's appropriate that we've got a little storm kind of in the air. Again, we've been waiting for a little storm and thunder before we did a 10 millimeter because it's kind of powerful. You know what? Let's shoot some of these uh, trophy bonded jacketed soft points. 180 grain. Okay. Let's shoot. Let's just shoot them all. What the heck? I don't get a 10 millimeter that often. So let's have some fun with it. Shoot some powerful stuff. So everybody won't give me a hard time for shooting wimpy ammo. Got to have nuclear ammo. In your 10 millimeter. Okay. All right. Very cool. And I, I, as I say, now, uh, if you have more information, you know, feel free to share how this thing is doing. If you have, if you have one, you know, anybody that has a modern one, uh, please, not if you, just because you're from the competition, but if you have a Delta Elite, you know, one of the newer models and uh, how it's holding up, or you know anybody that has one, I'm sure everybody would be interested, you know, to know. Uh, I've not uh, heard anything recently about it, but I don't hear everything you know, about it being... Uh, 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 any kind of problem or anything. Don't know. All right. Let's low lob some of these over there. Probably get a different point of impact. But... I don't know where it went. I think it's going low. Yeah. Yeah, it's going low. Let's try the other one. Yeah, I saw that. The left. <laughs> Helps to hit it. Helps to hit it. Let's see here one of these on the gong.
<laughs> I see it rocking. <laughs> I'm going to put one of these uh, powerful rounds on the cowboy here and uh, just to see him move. Wow, look at him. <laughs> Click. Did the mag, uh, yeah, didn't stay back. Okay. What happens in the video happens in the video. Didn't hold the, the slide back. All right. Oh, we broke it. No, we didn't. Looks fine. Uh, I'll go into the mag of those too. Uh, the one thing about this, I, I don't know, if I was going to shoot a lot of hot ammo in a 10 millimeter, I, I probably want a better beaver tail. Same old thing that we we all went through back in the 80s and the 90s, you know, having a, a better beaver tail put on the standard Colts and that kind of thing. Um, they shoot fine without it, but you know, when you're shooting something with this kind of punch, uh, you notice more that you don't have that 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 really smooth and high rise or high riding uh, beaver tail that is so common now on so many 1911s. You know, this one is is almost a stock you know firearm. It's okay. You can carry this in bear country. I mean, it's not going to hurt you. I've got. I've noticed it's. I, I can feel it. I've been shooting, you know, and I haven't shot it all that much. But it's just because I'm used to when I shoot a 1911, generally, uh, a pretty nice beaver tail, unless it's one of the World War II models. So just something to think about. I did notice this. This is a kind of an odd combination. Usually, you get a like the 1991 Colt models. You get a flat mainspring housing when you get a long trigger. This one, you've got a, kind of a, a mix here. You got the standard old raised mainspring housing, but you've got the long trigger, which makes it better. So I love the long trigger. I, ideally, you know, the flat mainspring housing too, though, is the combination. So, but the sights are fine. It's mainly the beaver tail, I noticed, that would be nice to have a, a better beaver tail. You've already got the commander hammer, so it'd be easier to, you know, switch that out. So, you got another mag. Well, let me load this while I'm standing here yakking at you. So, 10 millimeter is not everybody's cup of tea. It, ammo is not cheap generally. It usually runs higher than the other stuff. Why? It's why, why, yeah, really, why would it? Let's give an economics lesson here. It shouldn't, I mean, it's got less lead than a 45. Uh, probably no more brass, really, I guess. And, you know, it's just a, what's the difference? Uh, well, it's market, you know, it's a market. There's not as much of it being loaded, maybe. Not enough people carrying it, shooting it. If it were as popular as 45 ACP or nine millimeter, it would be a different story. It's like 357 SIG, maybe, you know, it, it, a lot of that kind of thing is, is uh, the market uh, penetration, saturation, how many people are actually shooting it, you know, and what's the demand. And so, so the 10, I think it's just always gonna be fairly popular, but it's just not gonna have the popularity level of a 45 or a nine millimeter. All right, now some people swear by it. They carry it, you do, you know, I'm talking to you. You carry a 10 millimeter, and you would not stoop to carry the little puny 45 ACP. I know you're out there. You know, you know I'm talking to you, don't you? All right. So what did I put in the gun? I put in the yeah you know, the standard ammo. All right. Let me see if I can hit the red plate. Look at those raindrops. You think that'll ruin it? All right. Stainless. I think it will survive today. All right. Put one in the chamber. I'll try the red plate. Bring it up a little bit. Let's try that turkey. See if I can get it up on there. Bring it up a little more. There we go. Oh man, it feels good. Let's try this coffin here. Uh, several fast ones if I can. <laughs> I just had three and I missed one of those, didn't I? All right, I've got some more of this barn burner stuff. Let's see if it'll rock these plates here. Swing the plates. I'm going to have to hit it, I guess. Wow. I don't know if I've seen that thing swing like that. <laughs> Those have some punch. They definitely do. There's a cowboy has not been shot. 
Cowboys. Trophy bonded, reserved for steel plates and steel cowboys. I can tell a, a, a difference there. That's that's some pretty hot uh, 10 millimeter. Now I don't know what the velocity is. It's on the box, I guess. Uh, yeah. Most velocity 1275. You know, so and it's 180 grain. So for you uh, fellows that like a nuclear weapon in your 10 millimeter, that may not be hot enough for you. But that's pretty warm stuff. I don't want to shoot a whole lot of tin that's that's much warmer than that. You know what? We've got three left. We might as well shoot them. Why don't we do that? It doesn't hurt you. It, it wouldn't hurt you at all if you had a good beaver tail. Trophy bonded. Let's bond these to a trophy. How's that? Ha, ha, ha. What a comedian. All right. Let's put one on the gong again. Maybe all three of them, or at least sling them out there. Notice this recoils more than the other. Okay, I guess I missed those first two. How'd I do that? Okay, I'm gonna fire eight real quick now, just for fun. It's a, a you know, good shooting little gun for just a kind of a stock 1911 Colt. Nothing special about it. Not a lot of accessories. Uh, bells and whistles that so many 1911s so uh, well I say come with but are available on them nowadays I think the trash can needs a little more ventilation so put a few 10 millimeter holes in it there may not have been any 10 millimeter holes in the trash can we like to uh, share the calibers you know get lots of variety in terms of the uh, the ventilation so Anyway, I guess I've shot it enough. Uh, it's pretty neat. Delta Elite. Uh, we're clear. Almost a stock basic 1911. Not a lot of difference. You notice your uh, vertical uh, serrations, just the rear serrations. And you do have a commander hammer and then a long trigger. Other than that, it's really, it's virtually uh, the same as a World War II 1911. You know, uh, yeah, not much difference really. Uh, and there's a there's an attraction, you know, to that, you know, really. Particularly if this is just a gun you'd like to have you got to plink with occasionally. It's cool to have a ten millimeter. You're not gonna maybe hunt with it, you're not even gonna shoot it all that much. You just like a ten millimeter and you're a nineteen eleven person, you're kind of a traditionalist, uh, you know, maybe this would uh, this would be exactly what would appeal to you, you know, because uh, it was the Delta Elite was the first 10 millimeter that was you know, again introduced by a major manufacturer. So anyway, as far as negatives, uh, like I say, the beaver tail you know, doesn't bite you, but you can tell you've been shooting after a while. Uh, this particular beaver tail, I don't like the the raised mainspring housing, but other than that, I mean, unless you just hate 1911s, there's uh, I can't think of anything else. The trigger is pretty nice. You know, it seems to shoot where it's pointed. The trick is keeping it pointed where you want it to hit when you let the trigger break, right? So 10 millimeter and 1911. Pretty cool. Let us know if you got one of these things and what you think of it. Life is good. <laughs> oh, well, since I'm still here, let me take this moment to thank uh, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute, for their support of the channel. Uh, we appreciate you know, their help. Uh, SDI is a place where you can get certified in uh, gunsmithing. You can even get an associate's degree in firearms technology and work in various areas of the firearms field. Might be appealing to you. They work a lot with veterans and uh, it's just a pretty cool place. So check out the link, uh, sdi.edu. Uh, the link is in uh, the description of most videos, almost all videos for the last six months or more. So, uh, so check that out. Also, while I have you, since I'm still here, uh, be sure to, to check the links in all the descriptions because, you know, we're on Full 30 now also with all the videos. So there's a link in the, in the descriptions to Full 30, as well as, of course, our sponsors, uh, SDI, BudsGunShop.com, uh, Federal Premium. So all the good information is there, as well as uh, keep in mind that on uh, Hickok 45 and Sun, we have uh, quite a few videos over there. John's doing the, the gun culture radio show over there. Check it out if you haven't done that yet. Our Facebook page, uh, the Hickok 45 Facebook, uh, Hickok 45 and Son Facebook page. 
That's where we try to stay in touch with you and uh, give you a little extra information. Even post pictures and uh, a little video occasionally, just, just whatever. Uh, mainly just a way to keep up with you all and provide some more information. You know, we're not really Facebookers, but it's a, it's a pretty good system for that, even though most of us are not in love with Facebook, right? <laughs> so check all that out. And you really had better check it out because I might just have to come to your house and have a chat with you if you don't. And I expect to have coffee and donuts ready when I get there. All right.